Hello everybody and welcome to Laurie's Mechanical Marvels. Today I'm at the Mid-Suffolk Light Railway with my Ruston 48. But we're not doing what you think. No, we're not going for a run up and down the railway because you see, my dear viewer, we are the wrong side of the gates. The Mid-Suffolk Light Railway is that way. And we here are sitting on the loading ramp because my little Ruston has been given a great honour. And as a result, we're going on an adventure all the way across Suffolk. That's right, she's going off on holiday, leaving the safety of the Mid Suffolk Light Railway for pastures new temporarily. We're having a weekend break away. So we've got the honour of opening a brand new heritage railway. And these opportunities don't come around very often. So I am understandably very, very excited for this little thing to go off and do something different and exciting. So I hear you ask, how do you move a small locomotive? Well, we've already done it once with a crane, but uh, honestly, I have no idea. I'm waiting for a lorry to turn up and uh, then we'll put it on the back of it. And I frankly have no idea how we're doing that yet because nobody's told me. I've just been told to be here and I am here. And the diesel is here. That's been moved here, ready to go. So um, now we play the waiting game, I suppose. Oh, manchets. Oh. What is it with these guys and picking up my vehicles? Great. It's a very big trailer. It's an exceptionally big trailer. In fact, it is the biggest trailer. So, this is the lorry that turned up, which is excessively big for a little seven and a half tonner. And we kind of had a discussion about how the 11 foot long locomotive would be dwarfed by it and how difficult the access is at its destination. So instead, we've got this coming, which is far more suitable for picking up a little bit of a little loco. One swap of the lorry over. And we're now maybe looking at business. The second lorry featured a tilting bed, which rather conveniently happened to have a payload of just a little bit more than how much my locomotive weighs, which made it the perfect vehicle to pick up the little locomotive. Having tipped the bed into its position, the guys set about setting up some steel U-bends, which were going to be the reinforcement to protect the bed of their lorry from the flanges on my locomotive. And once they are in place, they got the winch out and we started to drag the locomotive slowly towards and then finally up and onto the ramp. This is all quite a new experience for me. Because whenever I've offloaded or reloaded something at the railway before, the vehicle has always had rails rather than steel beams.
Bert, up she went. And once she was safely in position on the top of the middle of the truck, the boy set about strapping her down and securing her for her long journey across the great county of Suffolk. in the 106. The 48 has now left the site and I am in hot pursuit, ready to provide assistance when we get to the other end. It's a very strange sensation to see your locomotive trundling away in front of you on a very high lorry. And uh, already I've acquired a new bit of tree for it, so that's good news. Oh dear, oh dear. Now, for those of you who don't own a locomotive, I can tell you that is, it is indeed very stressful moving a locomotive and getting it onto the low loader and strapping it down and seeing it perched somewhere where it's really not meant to be perched. When I did this the last time round, I wasn't this attached to it. Yeah, I'd bought it and I was excited, but she wasn't my loco, you know, I'd, I'd just acquired it. It was getting it home. Whereas now she really is my locomotive and I spent a lot of time and effort getting her to be how she is now. And so the thought of anything happening to her is just, oh, it's not, it doesn't, it's not worth thinking about, it's just awful. So it's, um, it's a strange sensation seeing it this. It's also hugely exciting because it's something I've always wanted to do is to hover locomotive and let it go out on hire. So this is really, really exciting. Oh, look at her. genuinely disappointed at how fewer people seem to bat an eyelid that there is a locomotive on the back of a lorry. That upsets me. I was expecting like more people to be out there. I mean there's been a couple of people in like, oh look at that. And a couple of people I know I told you it was going past they came out and took photos and gave it a wave. That made me happy. But yeah, amazing how few people, yeah. I mean even for someone who doesn't like cars, trains, planes, automobiles, lorries, all this stuff. It's still quite an unusual sight to see a little diesel perked up on the back of a flatbed truck. You know, normally when you see a locomotive being transported, it's on a, a low loader. Not This is an unusual sight. But people don't care, so, oh well, such is life. It's also quite a um, strange sensation for me. I kind of feel somewhat like a parent who's just let their child go out on a bicycle for the first time it looks unnatural I can't do anything to save it if something goes wrong I just feel very powerless and my, my little baby's all over there all on her own I'm going with her like a good parent uh, this bit so far journey's gone okay so far of course we're on the main roads and getting into where we're going, we have to go down some back roads and then perform some really difficult manoeuvres. To the point that the lorry they showed up in first thing this morning, it just it just was not going to work. I, I don't think they'd got it down where we're going. Because it's going to be tight. It's quite the adventure, really. But, uh, here we go. Last time we moved it, we had to go some lunch and didn't follow it the whole way. That made it a lot less stressful. So we've just arrived into the town of which we're going, and I've just saw a kid saw the engine, and as it trundled past you, and that's made my day. That's made the entire trip. That reaction totally worth it. That, I'm happy now. That was good.
Mm. How are we going to get this down here? I, I have absolutely no idea how we're going to do this. Oh, there's a bridge there. I wonder how high we are. So I've not paid any attention to how high we are, but it's got the tree. Oh, oh God. Please fit onto the bridge. Please fit onto the bridge. Oh, for the love of everything, please fit onto the footbridge. Oh, it's, it's fine. Plenty of space. Panicked. I'm about to go and meet the people that I've never met before who have hired my engine. Oh, I'm so, this next bit is going to be just stressful. When you guys see where we're trying to put this loco and trying to put this lorry, you'll understand while I'm like stressed. This is one very, very, very narrow place to drop off a locomotive. And just make it more stressful on the guy on film it. Down here, this is our destination. This hundred or so foot of track. And funnily enough, uh, the engine that normally lives here, or used to work, the steam engine, is currently at the MIDI, it's Zerophyte, which uh, there's a picture here of my diesel offloading when it came to the MIDI. I'm so glad we swapped the trailer. This would have been so deeply unpleasant if we'd have not swapped the trailer. So, the locomotive made it safely to our destination. Where, I hear you ask? Well, we've come for the grand opening of the UK's newest heritage railway, which is the Leyston's Works Railway, which funny enough is in Leyston. And we are here for the 160th anniversary of the railway opening. It opened on the 1st of June, 1859, but there hasn't been a train running here for over 50 years. And so my little Rustin is going to get the honor of being the first locomotive to run in preservation for over 50 years. And it's going to be the first ever diesel to run on this railway. So what is this railway? Well, back in the day, Leyston's had a company called Garrett working for them. And Garrett were a world renowned factory that made steam engines, agricultural machines, 
basically anything. And the long shop, which is behind me, was one of the first production lines in the entire country. In fact, it was one of the first in the world. And so they had the works down there, which is now the long shop museum. And also that way they had what was known as the top works. And in fact, there's still some signs of the railway complex there today. And so how do you get goods between factory one and factory two when roads aren't really a thing? Well, of course, you lay a railway. And so there was this little railway, which is where we are now. And that ran between the long shop and the top works. And there was a locomotive called Syrophyte and that trundled up and down for most of its life. And then that was replaced with a battery locomotive. So there's never been a diesel locomotive to run on this line. So that's actually really quite exciting. We are quite literally making history. And so for a railway enthusiast, this is so very, very exciting. And I am truly honored. And to be fair, I'm just excited to show this thing off because it's basically useless anywhere else. And to be actually asked to come and do something, yeah, that's brilliant. So the big thing to do here is to reopen the railway. And that's going to be my big honor to drive the locomotive. There's going to be a little ceremony. The chairman's going to do some talking. And then the last signalman to work the railway, the proper railway over that way, where the, the main line comes in, is going to cut the ribbon and declare the line officially open. done amazingly well with this and I am so very chuffed because we've been on the television Leiston for the first time in 50 years because of a newly laid section of track railways always have a big draw there's something tied to us as the British and railways and so any new railway has always got some excitement and people like to come along and see what people are doing and kind of see that impossible dream we've been interviewed for the radio and so I've had a really good experience being able to show off my locomotive. And as you guys know, there's nothing that makes me more excited than kind of showing off my stuff and being able to kind of be like, that's mine. And you know what? So far, she's not broken, which is a rarity for all of my stuff. So that's been good. I've enjoyed that. And it's just been really nice having a lot of interest. People have come to actually see my engine, which is, this is basically what it's built for, was an industrial railway like this. And so this looks perfect on this railway, absolutely perfect. It's almost like it was meant to be. And it's just been nice seeing people enjoying it, asking the questions. And frankly, I've just enjoyed being able to talk to people like, yeah, it's mine. And people are like, oh yeah, do you know where it's come from? Yeah, 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 I bought it here. So much fun. Really, really have enjoyed it. And we hope, because we're only here for the weekend, we hope that we're gonna come back in the future. And as the Lace and Works Railway extends, maybe we'll come back and go a bit further than like 10 times the length of the loco. But for an opening, this thing has been perfect. So we have had a fantastic little holiday away. It has been an absolutely great honor for me and for Sir William to open up this brand new railway. And I have loved absolutely every moment of it. So thank you very much to the Leyston Works Railway for asking us and for having us. It's been just fantastic. And we hope to come back at some point in the future when there's a bit more track. So that's it guys, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little adventure, seeing my diesel come off on its summer holidays. And uh, please like, subscribe, share this video with your railway friends and uh, or your normal friends if you've, you've got them too. And we'll see you next time. And in the meantime, if you've enjoyed watching the diesel and you want to see a bit more railway action, click up here. And if you want to see a little Ruston, click down here. Thanks guys, we'll see you later.